traditional super fun and all about artisan cheese and more to melt your peaceful heart and toast your peaceful life. Coming to you from the Appalachian Mountains of southwestern Virginia, this is the Peaceful Heart Farmcast. Hey, this is Scott Hall from Peaceful Heart Farm, and you are listening to the Peaceful Heart Farmcast. Hello, everybody. Melanie Hall here. Hope you're doing well. The conversation today and every day revolves around the value of tradition, traditional homestead living, traditional raw milk products, and artisan cheese. Topics discussed here are designed to create new perspectives and possibilities for how you might add the taste of tradition to your life. Now, how do I get so much done in one day? This is a question I get often. I do a lot of multitasking on the homestead. I didn't just wake up one day and do this. There was a process that I went through to get from a scattered, unfocused, ineffective person to one who can just get things done. Now, of course, I'm not always in that zone, and there are days when I'm going into a room and wondering why I'm there multiple times a day sometimes, and there are But there are remedies to the unfocused mind, and I'm going to talk about that today. I want to take a minute, say welcome to all the new listeners. Welcome back to the veteran homestead loving regulars who stop by the farm cast for every episode. I appreciate you all so much. I'm so excited to share with you what's going on at the farm this week. I'll keep this part brief as I give you the updates on our animals, the gardens, and the creameries. Let's start with the cows. Uh, The cows are still undergoing various artificial insemination routines. The first attempt, uh, we inseminated eight of our cows. Cookie had just given birth a few weeks ahead of this, so she was not in this first rotation. And Princess is the only one that took. She... uh, yeah, so she, she's the only one that's officially pregnant right now. She's a, a purebred A2A2 jersey. Uh, so we did eight again this time. There was no princess, but we added in cookie. So we did the other seven plus cookie. We did check the semen to make sure that it was viable since we only had one out of eight. Uh, we used uh, sexed semen. And the it's, it's sexed semen. It's a... Uh, French Normandy bull and the semen is designed to produce heifers and this was much less active they have to do more stuff with it and it kind of messes it up a little bit more than just regular semen that they collect so in the end we used this sexed semen on our Normandy cows and we used the unsexed semen that we have on the Jersey girls uh, which has worked really well for us and I'm I'm pretty sure that is going to go pretty well Uh, we will pray for greater success this time and we'll know for sure in about three weeks because they'll come back into heat if they're not uh, pregnant. And I don't expect all of them to take. That would be wonderful, but it is not statistically likely. Um, At that point, uh, three weeks down the road, we will need to think about the next step. We would be getting very late in the breeding cycle. Uh, We may continue on anyway uh, because we need the milk to make the cheese. It's just so frustrating right now. We plan for the uh, births to be in March and April. And if we try again, it would push the births back into May or June 2023. Then we get into the situation like we had with Cookie this year. The cows will not be ready to start the breeding process again in that first week of June if they give birth in May. And I I think I've mentioned this before. (laughs) We make choices every single day trying to create our homestead exactly as we imagined. But in the end, it never happens as we imagined. And we just roll with the punches and make another plan. And that's, that's just what it is. You make these plans and then... Things don't go the, the way that you think the, uh, that, that you wanted them to. And so we just keep making new choices every single day. I know I've talked about that before. You plan something and then you make new choices. Let's talk about the dogs and the sheep. They are both doing really, 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 really well. I have them uh, collected together so they're in close proximity so they can get used to each other. And I'm still waiting on that magic moment when the dogs and the sheep bond. And so far, the sheep are still afraid of the dogs, especially Mac. Uh, sooner or later, they will cave and become used to these noisy beasts in their space. And we close them up in an even tighter space so they are more likely to get to know each other a little bit better. Uh, and 
we'll see how that goes. I've watched the sheep watching me feed the dogs. I even saw one start to approach Max Bowl while he was off munching on a bone. He's very sharp, and he spotted the advance right away, and he immediately went to his bowl and growled very ferociously at that sheep, and she backed away. So this is one of the reasons why they're a little leery. Um, and I don't want them to be afraid of the dogs, but I do want them to respect the dogs and their food. So I've, I've considered making a separate space for feeding the dogs, and that will probably still happen, likely will happen, uh, but I'm going to wait a little bit longer. I want the sheep to know that he will only growl at them when he's protecting his food. Any other barking, I want them to assume he's doing his protection job so that they know, respect his food, but he's not going to hurt them you know, in just his everyday barking and, and protecting them from predators. Now, I am getting a plan outlined to integrate the new goat kids into the group as well. It looks like that will happen sometime in the early fall. We will have three new goat babies to add to our family. And I'm excited about that and a little apprehensive as well. They are young and small, and I'm still learning about these dogs. So I'm praying it all goes well as they come together. The goat kids will also have to learn to leave the dog food alone. It's not likely that they will learn that. Um, they'll just they'll eat anything. Well, the sheep will too. So that's the point when feeding the dog separately will be, become most important. Um, the goat kids will change that dynamic, and I will need to um, get that separate space going. Now, let's talk about the creamery. The electrical wiring is moving along rapidly at this point. Scott is out there getting the hang of it, and that part will soon be complete. He does a room, and then we do the ceiling, and then he does another room, and then we do the ceiling. And I'm helping out by hold, helping hold up those pieces of metal as we get that ceiling in place. And we've completed so far the barn, the milking parlor, and the milk storage room. And we're working on the cheese make room. That's in progress. We're almost done with that. I'm not sure what room is next. Um, I just show up when he asks for my help. Uh, so he's going to continue on with that, and then we'll have the plumbing and the floors uh, once once we get... And the finishing the, the lighting. He's putting in the electrical wires, but he doesn't have the lights, and, and other receptacles and stuff are not complete yet. So he's just running the wires. So, we are making such great progress on that creamery. It's so exciting. Um, it, it, wow, the end is in sight. We're, we're going to get there, and it's, it's so close now. Now, the garden is in full growth and production mode. Here we are. In, this is August, and uh, that keeps me moving, too. Like, like the fruit that was coming in earlier, the vegetables need to be taken care of quickly or they spoil. Uh, fortunately, I've had some customers lately that needed squash and cucumbers, uh, and what a blessing they have been in taking my excess veggies home with them. I'm about to have lots and lots of eggplant as well, and I sell at the farmer's markets as well with the, with the vegetables. Um, it's been a while since it rained, and I am back to watering in the evenings again. Some of the cucumbers are looking a little worse for wear, as is the zucchini. Uh, they actually may be close to completing their cycle this time around and now that I think about it I could start more plants inside and have summer squash and cucumbers back in the garden in time for a late harvest um, I don't know that sounds more like more work than I have time for right now but I will I'll consider it in the next few days do I want a second crop of cucumbers and squash the chickens I am looking for my very first chicken egg any day now uh, Scott has completed the nest boxes, and the the hens have been trying them out. I I, I think they like their new boxes. I can tell they've been in there, and they the the hay that we put in there is kind of squashed down. So I can tell they've been in there sitting on it. And uh, we also have six white and one black rooster uh, that need to be processed, and that'll be enough for quite a few months for us. Actually, that's uh, seven. Seven birds, full-size birds. Whole, they'll be whole chickens. We don't, uh, we we cook them as whole chickens, and we don't eat a lot of chicken. But I'm looking forward to these American breast chickens. They're supposed to be prize-winning meat birds, so I'll let you know how that goes. Now that's it for the homestead updates. Let's move on to the main topic. How do I get so much done in a day? Well, 
the bottom line is concentration. Concentration is key. And like, for instance, today, I have several things in motion, a gallon and a half of yogurt and a pot of bone broth. Uh, those are both long-term tasks that I, I don't have to monitor. Well, at least I don't have to monitor them after I get them set up. So the yogurt and the, and the um, bone broth is over there just, you know, churning along. The, the yogurt has that in-between step where I need to cool the milk and add the cultures, but then it just sits there in the Instant Pot for eight hours. And the same thing with the bone broth. That's just in the, in the slow cooker for uh, a long time. I also have the juicer steamer going, and that's full of blackberries. I'll extract the juice and then make seedless blackberry jelly. It's a crowd favorite. Um, I also need to process about a gallon and a half of strawberries and get them into the jam pot. And that should keep me busy throughout the day today, uh, finishing up those blackberries and getting those strawberries ready. And the other stuff, as I said, is just going to keep doing what it's doing. Now, waiting on the sidelines are the cherries and the blueberries still in the freezer. You know, grab them as they're ripe and put them in the freezer. Putting them in the freezer is a great method of getting done what would otherwise be an overwhelming task. Fruit can go bad quickly, so it needs to be dealt with quickly. And I can go back later and make the frozen fruits into jams and jellies. I love it. Low stress is great. Uh, so what is the secret to be being able to juggle multiple tasks efficiently? Some of it is doing it a lot, doing the actual tasks, as I'm talking about, the yogurt, the bone broth, the making the jams. I've done that a lot. I know what I'm doing. But you still need a strong mind with skills in concentration memory, and imagination. Now, everyone has these capabilities. So that's really what we're going to talk about here. Concentration, memory, and imagination. As far as I know, none of these mental skills is related to intelligence. Uh, to develop these skills just requires specific exercises. And just like you would exercise a muscle, the more you exercise a muscle, the stronger it becomes. And perhaps there's a limit to how strong your mental muscles can become, but I am not aware of one. And of course, some people are going to be stronger in one area than another than others. Uh, it just depends. We're all a little bit different. Now, on a side note, I am aware of the physical limitations of memory. Uh, Alzheimer's is a real thing. Dementia is a real thing. The physical changes in the brain are real. And strength in memory requires a healthy brain. But exercising your memory can help to keep it in good shape. Now, concentration, memory, and imagination. These are three mental capabilities, and they relate to the past, memory, the present, concentration, and the future, imagination. There are exercises, mental exercises, for each of these mental muscles. When they are all strengthened and working together, juggling multiple tasks becomes easier. Actually doing anything with the mind becomes easier. Staying focused becomes easier. Re regaining your focus after distractions is easier. I'm just talking about the concentration here now. Again, the memory exercises, uh, those once you, once you exercise those muscles, exercising your memory is going to work better. Imagination, the same thing. Those things are going to work more efficiently, but you need to develop the skills. Today, I'm going to start with concentration. This is this is probably the most important area for me. And in fact, it, skill this skill is required as a foundation to develop memory and imagination. You need to be able to concentrate to be able to do the memory exercises and the imagination exercises. So the first thing uh, that we want to do is develop that ability to focus your mind in the present moment. And then we'll get to the, the other two in later podcasts. So... Um, Practicing what I've learned about concentration is where I always start um, when I feel out of of uh, out of sorts. And focusing my attention into the present moment reveals ugh, reveals relieves a great deal of stress and it calms my anxiety. So when you can you like you're scattered and everything feels crazy and you can just like zzz, focus your attention immediately you're going to have a greater sense of of uh, less stress and it can calm your anxiety. Now I do have issues with anxiety from time to time 
and uh, sometimes that can defeat me and I'll talk a little bit more about that a little bit later about things other things that are going on in your life that can de defeat you even in the with your best of intentions but you still want to practice the concentration and focus of attention and you want to do it outside of any stressful situation so if you're feeling that anxiety or if you're overwhelmed with this and that and the other um, you don't want to try and practice your concentration at that time. You need to train the muscle in a calm, no stress situation so that when you need it, then you can simply call on it and it is there. And it does help in my anxiety situations, but it's it's not going to completely uh, stop it. But I can, I, I can definitely have an improvement. So if you're trying to learn how to concentrate in the midst of chaos, that's really going to be futile. So uh, set aside a specific time to practice. Make this a time when you will have no interruptions. You're going to turn off your phone, any other electronic devices that may distract you from your practice session. Do it when the kids are in bed or at school or something. And uh, so you're, you're setting aside this time to develop muscle memory related to concentration. Now, when I, I um, when I talk about muscle memory, um, if if you have had dance, music, art, any kind of singing lessons, you, you would know what I'm talking about here. Um, and if you don't, let me just give it a little brief overview here. Let, let's say you're dancing uh, ballet. I did for years and years and years, and I didn't just wake up one day and perform. It takes hours and hours, weeks and weeks, months and months, and years and years to perfect your dance steps. You practice them in small pieces repeatedly. I'm moving my feet, my arms in certain ways, bending plie and stand up and point, and, you know, and so you're moving your feet and your body in certain ways, and you're repeating particular motions over and over and over again. And when, when the time comes to put it all together into a dance, you're simply repeating those motions in various com combinations. Your body knows exactly how to position itself, where to go with, with, with your body, and then your mind calls upon it to perform a long practice motion, and boom, you're now you're dancing. You're not just practicing point and close, point and close, but you're, you're actually performing a dance. Um, some of you probably have learned how to play an instrument, like let's say playing the piano, where you've got hours and hours that go into playing the scales, and you're not just playing the scales, but you're playing the scales with your fingers in particular positions. You're moving your hands, your feet, you're, and you're repeating the names of the notes in your mind. You're learning how to read the notes on the on the page, and so in that goes together with your physical hand motions and and they become drilled into your brain's memory practicing over and over and over again so eventually when someone puts a piece of music in front of you commanding your fingers to play the notes you see before you will come easily uh, each note is engraved in its own memory hole along with the hand and finger motions to make it happen uh, the training embeds into your memory muscle what it takes to play a G sharp or a middle C without having to think a whole lot about it. Boom, you just, your fingers move and the correct fingers hit the correct keys. And without that foundation, you're left to pick out a tune and play the same tune over and over until you get it. And sure, it can be done. You can learn the song, but you will always lack the flexibility that someone with the muscle memory has ingrained in their brain. I tried this. Uh, my mom had a piano, but I tried. I knew how to read the notes. I knew where the notes were on the piano, but I couldn't just sit down and play a piece of music because I didn't have that muscle memory in my fingers, in my mind. And so I would just pick out the notes over and over and over again, and so I could learn one song if I I would train my hands to play one song rather than having my hands and my fingers know exactly where the notes were and just read the notes off the page and make my hands go there. Anyway, um, so concentration is going to be the same. Instead of a, a physical muscle memory, you're building a mental muscle memory. And because I practiced that skill of con uh, concentration for years, uh, it usually takes little to no effort to call on it anytime I feel scattered or unfocused. I can play my mind and make it dance according to my desire. And I practiced the exercise that I'm going to talk about a little bit later. I practiced it for years every single day. And then after you've practiced it for a while, uh, like once you're playing the piano, you're, you're, you can still go in there and you can play those scales from time to time, but you just get in there and you play the music. You use the skills that you've built. And so that's where I am now. I just use the skills that I built over time. 
so it it it, you, it's, it usually, I say, usually it takes little effort to call on my concentration skills at any time. And I say you, it usually requires little effort because I'm also aware of how my physical state of being can affect my ability to concentrate. No matter how much I know what to do, I may have something else going on that overrides my skill, like the anxiety that I was talking about. Uh, perhaps I didn't get enough sleep or ate lots of sugar or I'm in pain. Or, and then all of my attention is drawn to pain or something like that. So I can practice and develop the skill, but I also recognize that human beings are complex. And even with the best of intention and the best will in the world, God in life can step in at any time and rearrange my carefully constructed plans. In any case, even if my life is scattered to the wind, I can gain some, I can regain some control in any situation. My ability to concentrate may not be perfect in times of stress or pain or poor nutrition, but it definitely is much better than no skill at all with concentration, where life seems to be just rolling over you and you have no control. So developing the, con the ability to concentrate and focus your mind when it's scattered all over the place, it, it's, it can bring peace to your life. Let me just say that. It can bring peace to your life. So let me talk about the exercise. Uh, for concentration. The, this is the one that I use to develop my concentration skills. Now, to do this exercise, you're going to need several items. Number one, a candle. Number two, a piece of paper and a pencil. Number three, a table and chair. And number four, a timer. So a candle, a piece of paper and a pencil to write with, a table and a chair to sit comfortably in, and a timer. Uh, the candle will be burning for 10 minutes at a time, so keep that in mind as you choose the size of your candle. Uh, it doesn't matter what kind of candle, but it does need to have 10 minutes of time left on it. Uh, a kitchen timer is fine for your timer, even the timer on your phone. Um, if you've got your phone turned off where it's not going to vibrate or make ringing noises while you're trying to do your concentration exercise, uh, you, want, you want peace and quiet, as I said. All right, so here's the steps to it. First of all, you're going to sit comfortably in that chair at the table. You want to be sitting up straight at the table and put the candle directly in front of you, and then you're going to place the paper to the right or to the left, depending on if you're right or left-handed, and place it where your arm is comfortably able to hold the point of the pencil on the paper. So the, the pencil's just resting there on the paper. The candle is in front of you. Light the candle. Set your timer for 10 minutes and start the timer. You're going to focus your attention on the candle flame and you're going to hold your attention on the candle flame. Now each time that you notice that your attention has wandered from the flame, make a mark on the paper and then bring your attention back to the flame. So it doesn't matter what you're thinking, just all of a sudden you notice you're making your shopping list in your mind or you're thinking about what you need to do, kids to need to go here or there. Uh, you need to do something around the house, whatever it is. Make a mark on the paper and then bring your attention back to the flame. Now that's it. You practice this exercise every day for 10 minutes and you're training your brain in that 10 minutes. Now let me give you a little bit more details on this. You don't need to really keep the paper. The paper and the pencil marks are just serving as a physical stimulus to refocus your attention. That's all. That's their only purpose. It's not about how many marks you make. That is irrelevant. The pencil marks are a way to grab hold of your attention and then move your attention back to the flame. Now, you may want to keep the marks as a record of your consistency with the exercise because your goal is to do this every single day. So every single day you would have a new piece of paper that uh, you could put together in a notebook if you wanted to. But basically, you're just as you're, it's like, oh, I'm thinking about what I'm going to do tomorrow. Stop. Focus your attention on making that mark on the paper and then put your attention back on the candle flame. So you're literally grabbing your attention, putting it on the pencil, putting it back on the candle flame. It strays away, grab it, bring it back to the pencil, make a mark, put your attention back on the candle flame. And you do that for 10 minutes. That's it. That's the whole exercise. You need to do it every day. Uh, if you run into trouble, let me know. I will be offering guidance on the Locals platform. You can interact with me there. Again, that is peacefulheartfarm.com. 
peacefulheartfarm.locals.com. Um, support my work over there, and, and I'll be there by your, your side to support you in your work. Um, further instruction in memory and imag imagination that I talked about earlier, that's probably going to be available over there. I'm not sure I'm going to do another podcast on that. Um, but I definitely am going to put that information. Those exercises will be over there on the Locals platform. Um, I'd love to help you reach your goals and improve your concentration, memory, and imagination. It will help you reach your full potential, be calm in your life, help you out with your homestead, dreaming about your homestead. Um, all of those things can come together for you. That's it for today's podcast. We are moving along at lightning speed here on the homestead with the garden and with the creamery. Um, I'm practicing concentration and mental focus every single day. It makes my life so much easier. And I hope this exercise helps you as well. Oh, I need to mention that you will, you will want to give it time. I've said that a couple of times that I practice this over years. You spend a great deal of time letting your mind move you. It will take some time for you to get hold of those reins and begin to direct your thoughts more pers purposefully. You know, for you to move your mind rather than letting your mind run wherever it wants to go. And there's going to be some good days and uh, some days when you won't be able to concentrate to save your life. Uh, but still do it. doesn't matter how many marks you make on that paper. Just keep doing it. But gradually, you'll develop greater and greater skill. And you will see the results in your daily life. All it takes is a little practice. Okay, okay, a lot of practice. But it's just 10 minutes a day. You can do it. If you enjoyed this podcast, please hop over to Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify, whatever podcasting service you use. Subscribe. Give me a five-star rating and a review. It really does help. And if you like this type of content and want to help us out here, the best way you can do that is to share it on all of your social media platforms. Share it with any friends or family you might be that who might be interested in this type of content. And let them know about the Peaceful Heart Farmcast. And come on over to our Locals community. Subscribe at PeacefulHeartFarm.Locals.com. We'd love to have your support and input in the community. And we'd love to help you out by answering your questions. See you there. Thank you so much for stopping by our homestead. And until next time, may God fill your life with grace and peace.